I've now been in this spot for a couple of days and the time has come to move on. I've got quite a busy day planned actually. First things first, a couple of hundred yards that way, then turn left down the Birmingham and Faisley Canal for another couple of hundred yards to Faisley Mill Marina where I want to top up my diesel tank. I estimate that I've used about 70 litres of diesel since setting out cruising in the middle of April, which isn't a huge amount and there is still plenty in the tank, but I might as well top it up. Also, Ever since the Canal and River Trust closed their offices at the junction up there, I believe Faisley Mill Marina now provide water and LSAN services to passing boaters. They've done some deal with the CRT that they will be the supplier and I need to empty my toilet cassette. And Besides, if I'm buying a load of diesel from them, I can't really see them arguing with me, uh, dropping off my rubbish and so on. Then I need to go about a mile further round to the west of Tamworth where there is a massive retail park with a couple of supermarkets and also a b and I want to get some more food and I want to get some more plumbing bits because what I've discovered with my washing machine is that even though the outlet hose comes up and down to the right height like is specified in the instructions and even though there is a one-way valve installed the right way round on the outlet, somehow I'm still getting water from the washing up bowl going back and siphoning back presumably into the washing machine. So I need to do a bit of a re-engineer on the outlet plumbing for that. So I'll go to B&Q and get some bits there. And then tomorrow, Saturday, is supposed to be extraordinarily hot. Well, for the UK anyway, it's mid 30s Celsius. So there's a massive heat storm across the whole of Europe at the moment, 45 degrees. And that's too hot for me, far too hot. So after getting the shopping in, and the bits from B&Q, I want to go and moor under a tree, probably just for Saturday, try and keep the boat cool, and then on Sunday I'll chug along a little bit further and find another sunny spot to keep the solar panels charged up. Anyway, busy day, so let's get on with it. I don't know what this CRT boat was doing, but it's always encouraging to see activity from the Trust that relates to maintaining the canals, rather than some of the promotional stuff they spend their money on. Ahead is Faisley Junction, straight on to continue up the Coventry, left to head towards the marina. I realise watching this back it looks like I was going like a bat out of hell, but I swear this must be an optical illusion because I really wasn't speeding. I wasn't hanging around, but I wasn't going faster than I should. This gap under the bridge is tighter than it looks, as I discovered there's a slight hidden shelf on either side. But I also reckon there must have been something deeper under the water there, because this happened. That was not me hitting the side. It wouldn't have shaken the boat like that if I had. That was something underneath that I went over, but I'm darned if I know what it was. It rather shook me up as well as the boat. I could feel the hull being pushed over something. It's a good thing narrowboats are made of steel. Anyway, time to turn left, which, as always, I couldn't start doing until the stern had cleared the bridge so that it had space to swing to the right. For a moment, I thought I'd made a hash of it, overshooting in my confused state following that bump. But no, I was a master of the seas. Perfect. Less perfect was the later realisation that I clearly hadn't wiped the glass clean of spider's webs before setting off, which is one of my usual tasks. I do apologise for this shoddy lack of attention to filming detail. It's a great web though. And so I was heading south, albeit briefly, past the old mill which gives Faisley Mill its name. It's only half a mile or so, if that, to the marina. It is quite a tight turn in, and you can't see if anything else is in the entrance where the service point is, or if anything's coming out. I shouted up to a lady on the bridge to ask if there were any boats there, but unfortunately couldn't hear her reply over the noise of my engine, and in throttling down to try to hear her, 
didn't make enough of a turn to do it properly. That meant a quick blast in reverse was required. But at least I could now see there was one other boat on the service dock, but no others in the way. That wretched web. The fuel dock is immediately on the right here, so I would have to line up alongside this other boat until it had finished. Turned out it's owned by a viewer of the vlog, so we had a nice chat too. If you look left from that dock, there's the rest of the marina. As hoped for, there's a water point here so I could refill my tank waste bins for general rubbish and a very shiny metal LSAN point for emptying your toilet cassette into, which I did. After topping up the diesel tank, which cost me 70 quid or thereabouts, I backed out. It was easier than going in because as I was standing at the back I could immediately see if any other boats were coming across the entrance to the marina. As luck would have it, not a boat came past, so I could just get on with taking the boat backwards as far as possible, then swinging it around, taking it back a bit further, around a bit more, and then finally straightening up to go back the way I'd come. The stretch from here at Faisley Junction up to where the Coventry joins the Trent and Mersey at Fradley Junction, I think I've got those the right way around, uh, is, is new to me. I haven't done that bit before, it's not very long, I'll probably take a couple of weeks to get there, but it is a new bit of canal, the second new bit of canal for me on this trip. Back up to the junction again, but this time a left turn to continue up the Coventry Canal. Arguably, I could have sounded my horn here to warn any boats coming through the bridge on the right that I was there. But nah, there's plenty of space to get out the way if I'd needed to, so I just took it cautiously as always. I notice there is still a water point on the towpath here, so if that's all you need, you don't have to go down to the marina. Now I was heading in a northwesterly direction, up and around the side of Tamworth. This boat coming up on the right is interesting. You may recall I had a new chimney custom made last summer, but Chris, who did it, is not the only such specialist on the cut. Here's another with a dedicated workshop in a separate butty boat you can just see coming into view at the end.
right in there he's making chimneys. Notice how the bridges have names here, not numbers, a legacy of this bit of the canal being built by the Birmingham and Faisley Canal Company, even though it's now referred to as part of the Coventry Canal. And another canal boat trader. If you want plants, this man has plants. I tend to kill plants, so I don't have them. Morning. Morning. Lovely selection of plants you have there. By this point I was almost near the industrial estates on the west of Tamworth. I just needed to go under the next bridge, round a corner and then find somewhere to stop. And although it's on a bend with a lot of overgrowth making it rather narrow, it's a good thing I did stop here because once you go past the next bridge there's no decent place to moor. So it was here I paused to go and get food and plumbing stuff from the DIY store. You can just glimpse some of the units from the towpath. Food shopping done, plumbing bits acquired, time to move on. The plan now was simply to continue until I found a shaded spot to moor, because the following day was due to be extremely hot, well at least for the UK, Temperatures of around the mid-30s were on the cards, and I don't like it much above 22 or so. Plus, being steel, the boat does get very warm and stuffy indeed, so the solution, in the absence of air conditioning, which generally uses more power than I would have available, is to moor in the shade and open all the doors and windows. There were lots of places with trees, but no metal armco to tie up to, which I prefer, so I just carried on. Mmm, look at that shade. But nowhere to tie to, and I avoid banging in mooring pins in the grass if I can help it, as they just tend to get pulled out when other boats speed past inconsiderately. At last I found a stretch with some shade and some metalwork. Still had to bang pins in, but the metal piles should hold them from being pulled out. Above the boat, not thick shade, but it would hopefully suffice and still let the solar panels get some charge in for a couple of hours in the middle of the day. Yesterday, as predicted, was extremely warm. The trees that I moored near provided some shade, but to be honest, I probably could have done with more. However, it was one random hot day, and now the temperature's gone back to about 21, 22 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna move from under the trees, firstly so the solar panels can see some action, and also because under trees, you just get a load of tree sap on the roof. It's a bit breezy today, but I'm not going far. The rest of this trip demonstrates how busy the canals start to get once you're at the end of June or early July. First of all, as I went to pull away, a boat immediately came past, and I waited for it to do so before I pushed out. A 
Before I had a chance to do that, though, another one came along. Well, I didn't wait any longer, but just got on with it, and things only got busier from there on, as you'll see in a bit. I had no plan for where I intended to end up on this cruise. I was ambling very gently up towards Fradley Junction, where the Coventry Canal meets the Trent and Mersey. These boats are moored in the village of Hopwas. I edged gingerly round the bend, keeping an eye out for oncoming traffic, of course, which luckily there wasn't any of. Despite explaining in a recent vlog how narrowboaters absolutely, definitely do greet each other as they pass, but you just don't see it from my bow camera, here's another attempt to prove it's true, which will hopefully put the question to bed. Morning. There, you see. It turns out Hopwas has a long stretch of visitor moorings, and it looks like a pleasant place to stop, albeit for a limited time. And having wanted shade the day before, it seems I could have come along just a bit further to here and had all the tree cover I could ever have wanted. Such is the joy of hindsight. This could really do with cutting back, though a commenter on my last video assures me it is in the works and will be taken care of by the wonderful canal volunteers. A magical bridge to the woods, but if you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. In my case, the surprise was no fewer than ten boats coming the other way in the space of a mile. Let's count them. See that dog on the towpath? He belongs to the boat, and I couldn't resist getting a shot. One unusual aspect of this stretch are these warning signs on the offside. Yikes. Now, where were we with that counting? That boat did warn me another was coming, but I wasn't sure how close behind, which inevitably led to a bit of frantic emergency stopping for both of us before I beckoned them through. They in turn warned me a cruiser was coming up next, and here it is. followed in quick succession by boat number 10. One more lovely dog on guard duty. Being in no hurry and finding this wide open countryside spot with boat 11 heading my way, I decided a break from the crowds was definitely in order, so I stopped. That's it for now. Cheerio.